Hey everybody, welcome to Gearhead Garage. I am out with Steve Martin today. Mr. Martin, not the Mr. Martin, but uh, the guy that I know is Steve Martin. Um, and we're gonna talk a little bit about his racing career, his aviation career, and actually get inside of his workshop, which is gonna just absolutely blow your mind. I mean, this guy is actually building a race car in his workshop all by himself. So it's gonna be a, a fun little trip in there to see what's going on. Plus, he's got some cool memorabilia in there that's gonna just, again, uh, it, it's amazing. It's really kind of cool how we save some of these things and the stories behind them. So uh, kind of stay tuned and look forward for that. But first off, let's talk with Steve a little bit about how did he get started in this crazy world of racing like the rest of us have. And uh, I think there's a, something, it must have been something in the water back then. But anyway, I'll let Steve talk a little bit about his, uh, his career here from start to finish. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, I want to thank Lon for uh, this project that he's undertaken. Um, I noticed his first video with Gary Wilson, and I, I think I called you, Lon, and I just you did. complimented <laughs> you on, on the effort because I, I just thought it was so cool. So. Uh, when Lon uh, put out the uh, email about, well, if you got a shop or something, you'd like to have me come by, and so I definitely uh, signed up for that. Uh, so it's been, uh, it, it's been a, I told him, it's, it's an opportunity for people that Lon knows in his, in his circle of friends. Uh, so much of what we do is, is kind of on our own and it's 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 an opportunity to uh you know kind of sh expose what we do and hopefully um those of you watching if you're younger you know you'll this will create some interest for you to hopefully come on into this uh, this crazy world we call motorsports. Yeah, the fraternity of motorsports, it's, we're not factory backed by any means. Yeah. We're, we're, it's all grassroots kind of thing and that's what we're trying to get across to people is uh, you can do quite a bit with uh, not very much. Right. And still have fun and go fast. So, yep, and you'll see about. not very much <laughs> <laughs> because I, uh, I, I jumped at the opportunity to, to have Lon uh, come over and, and take the video of this because I I I kind of I I make work with what I have so to speak and uh, and that just and you just do the best you can so um, Lon and I were talking uh, about how I got into this and and there's just such a common thread for those of us who are in this sport um, each of us had these these go karts that were built by our dads, and, and in my case, my dad and my brother. I, I pestered my dad so much about wanting a go kart when I was a kid that uh, my brother and he finally uh, put this what you'd call a go kart together. It was angle iron and a plywood floor and an old Briggs and Stratton motor from a real lawnmower, and you had to hold down the belt tensioner to get it to go and the steering was, I think, I don't know if it was ropes or what, but it was very rudimentary. Well, I always started with ropes. I, don't, I wasn't smart enough to figure out how to get the spindle to work on the rope to make it wrap the right way. So when I turned the wheel this way, it actually went right. Yeah. Mine sometimes it was the other way. I'd go this way and I'd go left. So, yeah, but that, yeah. everybody was there. But it was a learning process. For those of you our age group, you may have similar <laughs> memories. And uh, Lon actually got a, a mini bike. Uh, that uh, he was telling me about and I, I I wanted one of those so bad but I never got into that group <laughs> <laughs> the elite group to get into so, yeah. um, but how did we get involved I to where where the uh, desire came from I don't know I don't know but I started buying books as a kid that I've I luckily still got some um, and you'll see them here when we go in the shop but uh, that that's what fed my passion. I, I, I read books on how to be a race car driver and how to build a race car and you know all the different back then I mean it used to be like JC Whitney oh, and, for sure. and, and what was it Auto Week which was actually yep. a newspaper type publication yep. and I just 
I, that's, that's what fed my, my desire to yeah. do this. I would save my nickels up until I got, I think it was either 25 cents or 50 cents for the next <laughs> monthly edition of Hot Rod. That, that, I would go up and actually, to the drugstore, look through it first until I had enough money and then I'd buy it and take it home. That's right, that's yeah. when you had to go to the drugstore to <laughs> exactly. buy your magazines. Yep. And uh, yeah, road and track, car craft, um, motor trend, yeah. yeah. Just, I'm sure everybody kind of remembers those names. Yeah. I grew up on the property that we're on right now, mm. as it that's turns so cool. out. And it's, a, it's, it's kind of a, a neat story in itself because it's a, a fantastic place to live. Um, and, uh, but we did move when I was uh, fift coming up on 15 years old, or about 15, and we spent brief time down in uh, Union, Missouri, of all places. But there was a racetrack close, Wenzel, Wenzel. Uh, if that's, I don't know, maybe someone out there would know. <laughs> uh, anyway, it's a it's a racetrack, and so that's where I got my very first car. Uh, and I don't have any hard pictures of that. I've got some slides of that, mm. but an Austin Healey 3000. And uh, that's the car I drove up to the racetrack in, in, in Union, Missouri. But uh, so we ended up moving out to uh, Utah, uh, Ogden, Utah. Ended up out there, finished high school and college. I had a job as a Porsche Audi mechanic, apprentice. Then the Marine Corps recruiter showed up on campus and he had his pictures i'll never forget this poster that he had it the pilot sitting in the f4 you know his arms up on the side rails and the right. canopy open and it just says you know marine corps aviation or something like that and they also had this program where they guaranteed you going to flight school as long as you passed all the aptitude uh, mm -hmm. and physical stuff so i said well, so okay. they set the hook and yeah, exactly. They <laughs> set the hook, and I and I chomped it. So uh, that's where uh, my aviation career started. You know, I entered in '74, uh, still in college, but entered the Marine Corps, went through training, and I got out in '84. So right after Vietnam and right before Desert Storm. Yeah. Wow. So that was uh, that was a blessing. Thank you for your service. It's oh. very much appreciated. I. I uh, was not in the military service myself, but uh, I certainly appreciate and uh, applaud you for what you did for our country. So. Well, I always, I always say when people thank me, and I say, first of all, you're welcome. And uh, but the Marine Corps did more for me than I did for the, the Marine Corps. From uh, from the Marine Corps, I uh, was privileged and blessed enough to uh, work for a, a man named uh, Fred Smith, uh, the man who uh, started and 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 stuck to it and saw Federal Express become uh, a name that's known worldwide. Exactly. It's one of the it's one of the highest rated companies to work for. Mm. So it's uh, I was pri privileged to do that for 30, 32 years. Wow, cool. Let's take some time. We're gonna grab my other camera here. We're gonna go inside and take a look at what Steve's been working on and then we'll go from there. So stay tuned. Let's move in and see what Steve's working on in his uh, his shop here. We're going to take a little shot of the shop here too and kind of show you what it is here a little bit. This thing is actually um, less than a one car garage, which is kind of amazing when you look at it. Uh, he's got uh, something in there we're going to go over and a lot of memorabilia. Uh, so let's get in and take a look at it. But first I want to just kind of swing around here and show you uh, what he's working in. So you can see here that it is actually um, attached to his two-car garage here and it's a little extension that's onto the back of it which is kind of cool uh, race trailer race car so there's his race shop which is actually right inside there so let's go ahead and take a look and uh, let's go ahead and see what Steve's working on here so, uh, take a look at some of his memorabilia and see what's happening and there he is hey Steve how you doing hi Lon Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> Round two. Yes, sir. Yeah. So it looks like you've got uh, some memorabilia. You want to talk a little bit about? This is a really cool uh, publication uh, back in the day. is Peterson Publications. A lot of you probably remember that. This is ninth, the, comp, the complete uh, 
road racing results in 1967. Um, as you can see, Formula One and so forth. Um, David Hobbs is in here uh, several times and it has, you know, the entry lists and the results of uh, these different uh, different events. And so this is this is a really cool pub publication. I wish I would have taken better care of it over the years, <laughs> but maybe because it got so much looking at yes, it, yeah. <laughs> and oogering over was like well, it was a good reference it was one of those uh yeah if you ever got an argument with somebody it was easy to pull the book out and say here's who won that race yeah you can see it has it had all the tracks um road america is in here somewhere there was mid they just saw mid ohio they had the mid ohio uh here's road america yep. so yeah it was really cool i've always been a gearhead uh, <laughs> right to coin off the uh the uh the theme here yeah. um so i you know strange enough i've i i bought this book uh small black fords and that's what i'm running in my race car so uh, this, is a, this is a neat one i actually i had a volkswagen bug i think everybody did yeah i had one too <laughs> and uh that was when i was out in utah and uh a buddy of mine we must have he had one as well we must have had our engines out once a week <laughs> yeah four bolts and they dropped right yeah. out so and everybody everybody wanted a dune buggy so it looks like you've got some more stuff down at the end of the workbench here that probably uh has to do with your career also it looks like many pictures and some scrapbooks and yeah um i just this is just a small sample of all the pictures um probably a 67 tr4a Everybody had to have had a Corvette at one time or another. <laughs> <laughs> but strangely enough, I traded mine in uh, for a Dodge Power Wagon. So going from one extreme to the other. Speaking of the military, uh, the day I was commissioned, graduated from college, I had gone through the training necessary to become an officer in the Marine Corps. And this is my dad. Mm, cool. You know, and he was a former Marine as oh, well. Oh, gosh. He was proud. He served in... Uh, Iwo Jima. There's a young aviator climbing into his airplane, looking cool with his sunglasses. This is the day I got my wings. That was my last flight, and my mom and dad came down for that. And he pinned my wings on me. So. Mm. Some of my favorite pictures of, you know, like, time in the A4. This was on the ramp in the Philippines. We were on a deployment. And the reason this picture is so special to me it's uh, my brother flew CH-53s uh, in, in, the, in the Marine Corps as well and uh, did so in Vietnam. And this is a picture he sent me uh, when I was a kid, you know, through the, the mail. Oh, sure. Uh, from, you know, standing in front of Quonset Hut in Vietnam. All Steve, right. before we move on yeah. from here. Can you explain to me what those license plates are oh. there that we keep seeing and probably yeah. not talking about? Yeah. Um, I, uh, of course, done a lot of work in the backyard, and I found these in the backyard uh, here. And as you can see, you know, from 1944 and this one, 1941, Minnesota. Hmm, and then obviously, this one. And um, they didn't give out stickers back in those days they actually stamped stamped a new plate for you a new plate for you hmm. so that's that's what that's what those are from Good. Oh, what's this little scrapbook here yeah. i noticed on the as as we were talking how interested i was in cars and stuff as a kid i i don't don't ask me what age this was uh, i started i started collecting these these gum packet cards and you can see they're, they're actually pretty cool. They got an uh, explanation of what the car was. Probably tells the year as well. Um, but I I just, I collected them and I, back then I, I was much more organized than I am now. <laughs> and I actually had it looks like it, yeah. for my uh, for my pictures. I fulfilled my desire to race by, by collecting some of this. <clears throat> and as you can see, Again, I don't. I didn't mark down what year this was, but my mom kept all this stuff for me over the years. But there's a, you know, a hand-drawn picture of a Formula car in the day. 
had turned artist at the time. Stuff up on the wall here. Here's my first, I had a, obviously wearing a t-shirt that day. My first solo flight and my flight instructor wrote that on it and, <laughs> and then signed it. This is a pair of old bib coveralls that I I had and my daughter one day found them and, and wrote, I love you, Popsy. So that's pretty <laughs> special. This is, another, this is a helmet I wore in the A4s in the squadron. Uh, again, you, you kind of put the reflective tape on there and this is, represents the Skyhawk. They, that's the A4's designation, A4 Skyhawk. I'm very proud of this, uh, having landed aboard an aircraft carrier in training, you know, uh, uh, during jet training. I, I uh, got some, I got like four cats and traps in the T2 and six in the TA4. So what's the pole here, Steve? It oh, looks yeah, like it's right, the right past that. Black and white, rather ominous yeah. looking piece of equipment there. Yeah. I've, uh, like I say, I worked in maintenance in, in the A4 and uh, they these, these are all kept track of the number of cats and traps they have on them. <clears throat> and then after so many, they'll, they'll time out and they, they just throw them away. Well, I, <clears throat> I acquired this and I, I've carried it with me all the different moves I've made over the years. But that's so that's a piece that's on the aircraft, is that correct? Correct. That's, okay. the, that's the tail hook off of an A4. Okay, Steve, we're back here with you again in your little garage here, a little workshop area, and we're going to talk about the white elephant in the room. We've walked all the way around this particular vehicle, and... Um, Let's talk a little bit about it and see what you're building here. So this is the main event right here. <laughs> yeah, this is a, a project I, uh, I took on. Uh, as a kid, I always wanted to build a car. I mean, like from scratch. Don't ask me why, but um, uh, I have had this, this the chassis of this uh, vehicle is an MGB, a 65 MGB. And it just so happens to have uh, a 90 inch wheelbase, uh, which is exactly the same as a AC Cobra. Um, so I got to thinking, well, what am I gonna do with this thing? The body was like Swiss cheese, you know, so it, it was, wasn't gonna be worth trying to make it back into an MGB unless you wanted to replace all the body panels and what have you, and I didn't wanna do that. Plus I've always, uh, wanted to build a, uh, a car and it just so happens that uh, um, I, my wife and I uh, named our daughter Shelby <laughs> and the story behind that is we were looking we knew we were gonna have a girl and and we were watching uh, we were watching this movie called Steel Magnolias and the character the main character in it, her, Julia Roberts played uh, her name was Shelby and so we both liked the name and uh it all fit into place yeah it fit into place so it, it, for me it was uh oh that works for me and you know carol shelby so <laughs> so uh this is a project uh that i'm really building for my daughter uh, you know it's 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 a it's gonna be a 289 slab side cobra what they call them a shelby cobra and um uh, as you can see, I've cut all the uh, MGB um, sheet metal off of it, and uh, the MGB gets a lot of its strength through the unibody chassis, and so I'm going to be strengthening this up with uh, in other ways, and I started doing that with some of this steel. This steel uh, tubing here runs up through the chassis, actually runs up to about about this point I, I cut it so it sn snakes up into here welded it all in i've got a lot of more welding to do and so i'm, I'm so that portion that you're just pointing to there that's that's the old mg chassis then that yeah. you've started with this is the chassis and okay. it came down to about here and then it had a it had a side you know a, a cross member that went across the uh, transmission uh mount crosses in here somewhere the engine obviously sat up here um so oh we've got a little we've got that's simba yeah he's my buddy yeah i see that 
Um, this is a Tramec T5 transmission that I bought uh, for the car. Haven't gotten, haven't got the motor yet, but that's going to be built by Gary Tsar uh, from Tsar Racing Motors Engines, okay. and he's the one that bought the, uh, bought, uh, built the uh, the engine that's in my race car. Great, uh, great engine builder. Um, anyway, getting back to this, uh, all this tubing you see here is uh, built by a man uh, named Tom. Uh, and he lives in Las Vegas and actually worked with Carol Shelby on this type of thing. The, it, I call it the substructure or the skeleton of a cobra. Uh, when the body is done, and I'll talk a little bit more about, about the body in a minute, it will obviously drape down over this and, uh, and attach to all, a lot of these different pieces on here. And that, uh, that adds strength as well. So how do you know where to... So the, the, the tubing here is actually something that you've purchased from somebody. Yep. How do you know where it goes? Where do you put it? And how do you know it's on here straight and level and all those good things? Yep. Well, you can we'll start off with the level part. Uh, you, I've got these, you know, I keep track of this, these levels I've, I've got on here and they are level uh, to the chassis. And then you can see up here, this is the, uh, the cowling uh, frame where the uh, you know front of the nose basically comes back I've got that level with that up there and then back here this this cross member uh, is also level so, so it's just a constant checking that the that everything's going to be level and square um, you can see these 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 uh, strings I have hanging down and I'll show you in a minute I've got a blueprint that that tells you from the center line of the axle to this front rail is so many inches and so that's I measure that and I've got that set where I want it um, where this this cowling brace is set is measured from the front, or actually from the center of it. Obviously, I couldn't hang a string down from the center, so I just wrapped it around, hung it down from the front, and, add, and then I add three quarters of an inch. But you measure from that to the center line of your front axles, and that's a certain distance. And that's what I've got it set at. And I just got it tack welded right now. And so, um, that's so again, all that measurements and things are coming off from what yeah i'll show you this is this is this was amazing the gentleman that i combined the body uh from and it's going to be uh hand built for and formed aluminum body this gentleman is the name of his company is coach smithing his name is alan and uh, he had these blueprints uh, made up by this gentleman here. And he builds bodies for uh, 427 Cobras. And of course, mine is going to be what they call a slab side. In other words, it doesn't have the flared fenders and so forth. And well, I can show you some pictures of the hope it will look like when it's done. So your measurements then that we were just talking about as far as uh, where things are placed as you're starting to build your substructure are coming off from his set of blueprints that he needs when he builds your body. Yep, Okay. exactly. Yes. This is really just a true, um, when they talk about grassroots hot rodding kind of uh, being non-existent, existent, I should say, that's, that's not really the case here. You're really, this is really backyards under the oak tree kind of, Kind of operation um, you can see the uh the, the quote rotisserie that i i built out of two engine stands um and it works well it's it works great and then i just fabricated these mounts and uh actually spins around and it's fairly centered i'm kind of making this up as i go um and thank god so far it looks like it's gonna work but, uh, you know, it's just one of those things. I just, 
I had this idea in my head and, and I, I come out here and I do a few things, you know, during the day and, and cut and weld and uh, you know, it's coming together. I, I, All right, here's my, my stash of, uh, of parts that I um, am accumulating. As I've talked about, um, these are some coils for the front coilovers and shocks. They're in these plastic boxes. Um, this is just some new wheel bearings and stuff for the for the rear end. These are actually the rear axles. These two right here. And these are uh, brand new um, uh, spindles that were pressed onto these axles. I had that done by uh, Quality Coaches, uh, Mark Brandau, uh, down in South Minneapolis as a as a great shop and he he's helped me out tremendously with getting getting a lot of these parts and then doing some physical work too here's the uh differential pumpkin as they call them um i just uh got all this stuff waiting to these are the front spindles real similar to that they go on they go on these with wheel bearings and what have you you can see Here's my, uh, that's, that's my rear suspension, basically. Um, these are the, the, there's one front, here's the, the two lower links, and then this third link goes on the top of the differential to a, to a bracket that I still have to fabricate. This is part of the Watts link. It centers itself on this. and I fabricated all this, it goes on here like that. And here's the, here's the two links, upper and lower Watts link uh, that, that goes on there. I've got a picture, I, I've had it all fabbed up and mocked up, um, but it look, it's gonna look pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, so you've got uh, and here's my, bits and pieces just yep, waiting to... Uh, yep, there's my front shocks. And they, they came with this uh, this system here. So yeah, yeah it's all... that's pretty much this, what my intent is to get get the suspension. Uh, again, it's probably be a, a mock-up. I may have to take it off again uh, at some point, especially when we get the body and stuff. But again, it's it's a kind of a trial and error. You, you, that's what hot riding's about. Yeah, and you, you mock it up, and you see if it's going to work. And then you may have to take it apart to make something else work, but that's just, that's part of the fun. All right, we're back outside now underneath the canopy here with Steve. Uh, he's going to tell us a little bit about his current race car. And we said earlier that uh, he numbers his cars by the uh, aircraft that he flew. So the last aircraft he was uh, in, I believe, for FedEx was probably the 777, thus the number of his race car. And we're going to see if there's any history behind this thing and uh, how Steve acquired it. So go ahead, Steve. Okay. Um, yeah, I've got this in, the, in 2015 um, after I attended one of Gary's uh, schools in the uh, Spec Racer Fords that lit my hair on fire to, to, to get a race car. Now, little did my wife and my, well, my wife particularly know that when she bought me a Father's Day gift to go up to Brainerd and hop in a real race car, that it would it would rekindle my passion. So uh, it, it's all Gary's fault, is what it, you're saying? It is. It's <laughs> Gary's fault. <laughs> so anyway, that was a Father's Day gift and user gift certificate to. Uh, it was just one session, by the way, mm. and it just. I mean, so I, I think it was like less than a week later. I. I I emailed or called Gary and I said, Gary, where can I find a race car? <laughs> you know, I want to do this. Uh, cool. And so he, uh, I think he gave me the name of a guy named John Hagen. And he had a TR4 that I uh, uh, went and looked at and uh, didn't end up pulling the trigger on. But long story short, it was in 2015. And um, I was on a trip. I was on a layover as outside of Tokyo and I was online on uh, racingjunk.com I think and I saw this car for sale and it was just it was coming up to the end of that trip so 
I got home and the gentleman that owned this car uh, lived in uh, Savannah, Georgia. And so I, I uh, jump seated uh, on FedEx down to the, the, the southeast and went and looked at the car and loved it and I bought it. The history, as far as I know, the car in the early, the logbook shows 2000, I think. And it was, I believe, built by the Holloman Moody or some attachment to the Holloman Moody organization in, uh, I think it's Miami. Um, that's where the car came from. So what's the, uh, what what year is it, Steve? Uh, the, the VIN number on the car is a 79. Um, a lot's been done to have other stuff on it beyond 79. Uh, even this front nose is, is uh, I, I think it's like even an 85 or something. But uh, the VIN number for the car is 79. So no motor in the vehicle now, but what was in it? Um... Well, I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll go in and I'll show you the motor. You drive the, the car, of course, at Brainerd and, and other racetracks around. What uh, class or what um, sanctioning body do you run in? Yep, I, I participate or, or uh, am in the club. It's called the Vintage Sports Car Racing. Here's a small little sticker. Um, they can be found at uh, vscr.org, I believe. Um, if you're interested at all, you can go to that website and... Uh, um, and get some contacts. Uh, our competition chairman is a gentleman named Steve Nichols. He races an MGB and uh, fabulous guy, one of my best friends. And he'll, you could, he'll love to uh, explain how to get involved. Well, that just about wraps it up here. We, uh, I want to thank Steve for You want to sure. go inside the trailer real quick? Oh yeah, let's do that. Let's take a look and see what's inside the trailer. I got to show off. Show off my uh, my pretty Tzar motor. That's what. Uh, that's a. It's a. It's a small block Ford. Uh, developing. Um, Long arm of uh, horsepower, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's a fun. It's fun to drive. So Tzar is that a local uh, company then, Steve? Tzar is uh, up in Long Lake, uh, up, you know Minnesota, mm -hmm, right, right off of Twelve yep. there, and um, they he builds Chevys, Fords, Mopars. Uh, he's got his own drag car. Uh, He'll be up at Brainerd this weekend on the drag side, and uh, but he builds motors for all, probably all over the world. Okay. You know, shipped all over. Good. The we'll give him a shout out too. Let's wind up with this. I'm sorry. No. Uh, a couple. Let me see. We'd like two years ago, we had an event down in uh, Dubuque, Iowa that uh, Dick Waldrick organized. It was, it was focused around MGs. But um, I was the black sheep in the uh, in the mix, and I took my race car down because from there we went up to Road America, where I got a bloody nose. But anyway, David Hobbs was their guest speaker, and uh, I got to know David, uh, you know, on first first name basis, and uh, he signed my car. Well, isn't that cool? Yeah. Again, just some more memorabilia to add to uh, what you've already got collected over the years. Yeah. So. Well, thanks, Steve. That was Welcome. very informative. Uh, I enjoyed coming out and visiting with you. Yeah. We can certainly uh, come back if we need to and do some more things. But uh, this has been this has been fun. And uh, again, thanks to Lon and uh, uh, everybody watching. Uh, it's if you love this sort of thing, do it. Yeah, exactly. Check you later. Bye. Now.